Patch 12.6 is less than a week away and we're finally seeing some more changes to the Summoner's Rift. It's felt like the last few patches have really taken their time, so some big changes are definitely welcome. There are plenty of buffs and nerfs including Hecarim and Trindamir. So let's get straight into the changes. Let's start with the buffs. Azir is getting his health per level increased from 92 to 105. Azir has felt a little bit unloved in recent seasons and you know what, I'm all for him making a return. This could be the start for him and it isn't going to make him broken but it would definitely help out. Darius is getting his ultimate base damage increased from 100 to 300 to 125 to 375. Darius hasn't really had the best season so far and it's honestly to be expected to see some buffs for him. This buff is pretty good and Darius mains will be more than happy to see this implemented. Jax is getting his yearly buff because Riot think it's about time for him to be OP again. Yes, Jax seems to get one buff every season and it always seems to be enough to make him completely broken again. His base health is going up from 593 to 615 and his W base damage is getting buffed slightly at all levels. Jax definitely doesn't feel too weak at the moment, despite his win rate being a little bit lower, but these buffs could make him a little bit too scary. Nidalee is getting some buffs too, so be prepared to see a ton of first time Nidalees inting in your solo queue games. Nidalee's W Bushwhack, which is a trap, is now costing less mana. Nidalee's W Pounce now has a larger AoE radius, which will help us clearing camps, ganking, and even fighting multiple enemies. Nidalee's E Prime Surge, which is her heal in human form, now has a higher cast range and a lower mana cost. These changes may sound fairly small, but honestly they could really bring this champion back into popularity again, so let's see how it pans out. Onto the nerfs now, and we finally have nerfs for Hecarim and Trindamir. Hopefully Diana will be next up sometime soon. Hecarim's Q and E base damages are being nerfed at later levels, meaning he might not two-shot you as often when he builds like a full tank. Hecarim has been dominating the jungle all season, so these nerfs are definitely welcome. Let's see if it's enough though to bring him down a notch. Trindamir's E's cooldown reduction on crit is being nerfed, as well as his ultimate cooldown in the early ranks. This one could be huge. Trindamir's ability to repeatedly dive his enemies with his ultimate when he's got a lead is what makes him so punishing to play against. This could provide larger windows to punish him and prevent him from snowballing quite so aggressively. Moving on to the champion adjustments now, and there's only one champion being changed and that's Rengar. So we covered this a few weeks ago in our initial patch 12.6 preview, but now we know all of the confirmed changes, let's go through it quickly again. Let's start with Rengar's passive, and it now shows in a new unique bar similar to Aurelia's passive stacks. If you've played Rengar, you'll know that leaping from a brush at zero ferocity gives you a stack, but now, when Rengar reaches no ferocity, his next leap will generate one, even if he's already used abilities and he's no longer sitting at zero. This means you can use other abilities when you hit zero ferocity to get stacks, but you'll still get one from the leap anyway. The leap stack is going to show up as purple, so you'll know if you can get a stack from your next leap, or if you've already got it. Rengar's passive leap range is being increased from 725 units to 745 and the leap grace period window is now always 0.35 seconds. Rengar's ferocity fall off time is increased to 10 seconds. If you play much Rengar you'll know that this is already a really nice small change and just as an example it should help you keep that up easier when moving in between jungle camps. They're also doubling the bone tooth forgiveness time from 1.5 to 3 seconds. What this means is you'll get a trophy if an enemy dies within 3 seconds of you damaging them. Finally, Rengar now also leaps a bit higher when he comes out of the bush, so it's just going to scare you a bit more. Onto Rengar's Q changes and these ones are pretty significant. Rengar's Q now always counts as a critical strike and his crit chance scales with his damage. The damage is increased by 0.66% per 1% crit chance. This also works on towers and structures but no longer on jungle plants. The fact that it applies to turrets means Rengar's split pushing is probably going to be very very strong. Therefore, be prepared to see some top lane Rengar's smiling from ear to ear. Rengar's W is not being changed which is great for all Rengar mains as they were rumoured to be removing the cleanse from this ability back in a previous rework, which they didn't go ahead with. Rengar's E now has no cast time when leaping and it reveals enemies hit for 2 seconds, which is really good as you need vision to jump to your enemies out of your brush. Maybe one of the most underrated changes though is that Rengar's ultimate now not only reveals enemies but also in an area around them. This could potentially give you a ton of vision when scouting out objectives and checking if you're safe to get in and assassinate a solo carry. So that's all of the Rengar changes, what do you guys think? Is he going to be broken or is he just going to be same old Rengar? Which I guess some people will already argue that he's broken. It depends who's playing him. Moving on to the system changes now and let's start with the nerfs. A fair few of the lifesteal items in the game are being nerfed so this will likely have a big reflection on those meta champions that rely on them. Vampire Acceptor, Blade of the Ruined King, Immortal Shieldbow and Orn's Blood Ward are all losing 2% lifesteal. Immortal Shieldbow is getting some compensation though with a bit of a buff to its mythic passive health and its lifeline shielding amount. Fleet Footwork and Legend Bloodline are also two runes that are being nerfed slightly. It seems that Riot are hitting the sustain and lifesteal champions specifically here, so let's see just how much difference this makes. 
Finally, Ravenous Hunter is no longer going to be in the game, and instead it's being replaced by Treasure Hunter. This new rune grants bonus gold when you claim a Bounty Hunter stack, which from first impressions seems kind of useless. It's going to be interesting to see just how this rune works out, and if it's any better than it sounds. This is fairly bad news for those champions who rely on the healing from Ravenous Hunter as a form of sustain, but you really do never know, so let's see what happens with these rune changes. Finally, the Mythic Essence Shop will be hitting the Riot Client this patch, so it's time to finally unlock those Prestige and Gemstone skins that you've always wanted. That's going to be it for this video covering the full 12.6 patch preview and balance changes coming next week. Let us know what you think of these changes in the comments below. That's all for us here at Mobilitics and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.